Um, so I looked into um, building family connections to the classroom. I was really inspired by Erin's presentation and building community connections to the classroom is really, really important to me. But for the purposes of this three-week course, I decided to narrow it down and look at just engaging the family in the classroom. So I went out and I talked to parents and teachers because who better to talk to about engaging the family in the classroom than the teachers and the parents. Um, so I chatted with them and sort of said, you know, what, what experiences you, have you had? What were good experiences? What were bad experiences? What would you have liked to have seen? So the first things that people told me were the standard, oh, you know, homework. I help my kids with homework at home. And, you know, the pack. And but occasionally I get phone calls from teachers and those sorts of things. Go on field trips. I try and make room for one field trip per year per child. And I thought, well, that's really not that exciting. So then I asked, <laughs> what were some interesting, different things that you saw or that you tried as a teacher that worked? And so I chatted with Carol, and she told me about um, Aiden's kindergarten teacher who came to our class and gave us a presentation. She opened up the classroom on the first day of school for the um, first half hour of the day and allowed the parents to stay, and the kids just kind of played, did their own thing in center time. So the parents could stay in the classroom and ask questions and sort of watch their child settle in, which I thought would be really, really valuable. Not just in kindergarten, but in all primary classrooms, so that was a really good idea. Um, phone calls home that weren't about negative things. Maybe a phone call home at the beginning of the year, Phil in our drama class had mentioned that he used to phone all of the parents and say, Hi, I'm your student's teacher this year. Um, these are some of the things that we're going to be doing. Um, is there anything I should know about your child? So you could find out things right away, like what's going to be a touchy subject? What values the parents have that they don't want you to go against? If you have Jehovah's Witness in your class and you're going to be teaching fairy tales, that's going to be an issue. So those were good things. Um, Carol also mentioned that uh, sending home a letter or something, um, or even just talking to parents about specifically what's going to be covered in the year so that parents can decide when they might want to get involved and how they might want to get involved. Guest speakers were awesome. So then I asked, <coughs> what didn't work? <laughs> the biggest one was phoning home always about negative issues. Your child did this today. It was really, really discouraging to parents. The other really discouraging thing was, oh, hi, I really know a lot about Hutterite communities because I used to teach in a Hutterite school, and I see that in your, your curriculum, you're going to be covering that topic. I could come in. I've got some really awesome photos and stuff that I can talk about. Can I come in? No, sorry, we've already gone past that section. We don't have time for that. Really, really big turn off to parents. So if you get family members that are really interested in coming in to talk about something that is relevant to your curriculum, really making time for them or giving a good justification why you don't have time for them is super important. So then I looked at some research of um, what, what studies have gone on about parent involvement and basically there are two types of involvement, school-based involvement and home-based involvement. Most of the studies have focused on school-based involvement. So that's things like coming in for parent-teacher interviews. And what has been found is that um, school-based involvement is really well related to achievement in school. Home-based involvement is a little bit more ambiguous in the research, mostly because uh, it's difficult to know what parents are doing at home and how they're doing it. What is known is that parents who focus on um, intellectual development not specifically related to school, those children um, do have better achievement in school in the future. It's positively correlated, but not necessarily definitive. Why we don't, what happens when we don't know what's going on at home or how the parents are involved is related a lot to what the parents' parenting style and the help is like. 
So the, um, the study looked at autonomy versus control, process versus person focus, positive versus negative affect, and positive versus negative beliefs about the child's potential. So when parents were focusing on autonomy, process focus, so that's like learning how to do something is more important than your innate ability to do it. Um, have a positive affect, so they're saying positive things about it and <coughs> acting positive about it and have a positive belief in their child's potential, those children had better success in school. When the parents were controlling, um, focused on innate abilities, the person focused, had a negative affect and had a negative belief in their child's potential, those children actually were worse off having their parents involved than not having their parents involved. But of course, these are studies that are, there's not like a manipulated thing in there, so it's kind of hard to make black or white judgments on it, but how the parents are involved definitely is important. The other thing was why the parents are involved. Mostly it had to do with academic success, um, but also what was found was that the effective parental involvement had a major impact on the emotional development of the children, and that was probably more important than the academic success itself because it built um, the child's belief in their ability to do things. So a lot of this is very much related to um, the self-determination theory. It's all very much related to that. So that's the study down there that <coughs> it's, um, goes into a lot of different studies. So if you're interested in that, you can read the paper. So then I thought about what would I do in my classroom. And of course, this is under construction because who knows until I try it. So I thought about doing things like having a website with a forum on there that parents can talk to each other and they can also send feedback to me anonymously if they want. Doing projects that involve parents and families that don't necessarily happen or require it to be happening during class time for parents that work. So maybe it's a play where parents can come in and help with the set on their own time or they can help with building costumes or that kind of thing. Ways to get the family involved without putting pressure on it, because I think that's really, really important. A lot of things that don't work are sending home big projects. <clears throat> the parents just feel this big pressure that they have to do it for their child, which is defeating the purpose entirely. So I have a bunch of different ideas of things I'd like to do, but again, it's all under construction, and I think the biggest thing is to just try things. And you're not going to be able to control parenting styles, you're not going to be able to control what's happening in the home, but I think having parents involved in any extent is better than not having parents involved at all. So then to close, I found a letter online that is designed to send home to parents at the end of the year. And it really reminded me of what we're doing, why we're doing it, and the trust that parents place in us in what we do. Dear parents, I give you back your child, the same child that you confidently entrusted to my care last fall. I give her back pounds heavier, inches taller, months wiser, more responsible and more mature than she was then. Although she would have attained this growth without me, it has been my pleasure and privilege to watch her personality grow day by day. I give her back reluctantly for having spent 10 months in the narrow confines of a crowded classroom, we have grown close become a part of one another, and will always retain a little of each other. Ten years from now, if we meet on the street, your child and I, a smile will light up our faces, and we will feel the bond of understanding once more, this bond that we feel today. We have lived, loved, laughed, played, studied, learned, and enriched our lives together this year. I wish it could go on indefinitely, but give her back I must. Take care of her, for she is precious. Remember that I will always be interested in your child and her destiny, wherever she goes, whatever she does, whoever she becomes. I will always be happy to share her joy.